Ever been stranded on the side of the road because your car just wouldn't start? Or maybe that pesky check engine light suddenly lit up and you're not sure if it's a minor fix or something serious, don't worry. Today, I'm sharing eight super easy do-it-yourself fixes that can help you troubleshoot and potentially solve that problem quickly and without breaking the bank. Whether you're an experienced mechanic or just starting to get your hands dirty under the hood, these tips will help you understand what's going on with your car and how to fix it with confidence. So stick around because your vehicle's next start might just depend on these simple tricks. Fix. Number one, tighten the gas cap. All right, let's start with a fix so simple. You'll kick yourself for not checking it sooner. Tightening the gas cap. Yup, this little piece of plastic can be the culprit behind that mysterious check engine light. The gas cap seals the fuel system and maintains pressure within the fuel tank. A loose or damaged cap allows fuel vapors to escape into the atmosphere messing with the emission system and triggering the check engine light on. You might notice reduced fuel efficiency or even a fuel smell around your car. Both are telltale signs that your gas cap might be loose or worn out. Start by taking a good look at your gas cap. Check for visible cracks or damage to the rubber seal, which, if the cap looks worn or cracked, it might be time for an inexpensive replacement. Make sure the gas cap is on snug. A few turns until you hear a click usually does the trick. That click is your assurance that it's secured. After addressing the gas cap, the check engine light might not turn off immediately. Try driving for a few trips, or if you're impatient like me, I use an OBD scanner from Amazon. It's reliable, easy to use, and budget-friendly. Want to see which one I recommend? Just click the link in the description below. Your car will thank you, and so will your wallet. Fix number two, oxygen sensor replacement, an understated hero of your engine's efficiency. Let's unravel why this small component is so vital and how you can tackle it yourself. Think of the oxygen sensor or O2 sensor as your engine's very own air fuel mix DJ. It monitors the amount of unburned oxygen in your exhaust and helps your engine's computer adjust the air fuel ratio for optimal combustion. When it's off, so is your engine's performance. Here are signs of a bad O2 sensor. Check engine light, the most obvious red flag. Poor fuel economy is also another one. To fix it, you can do it on your own. You'll just need these tools. Wrench set or O2 sensor socket, new oxygen sensor, anti-seize compound to prevent rusting. And if you want to be safe, some gloves and goggles. Now to replace it first, you need to locate the sensor. Normally, you'll find them screwed into the exhaust manifold or along the exhaust pipe. Some cars might have more than one, pre-cat and post-cat. Now remove the old sensor. Use a wrench or specialized O2 sensor socket to disconnect the sensor. Be sure the engine is cool to avoid burns. Then install the new sensor. Before installation, apply an anti-seize compound to the threads of the new sensor. This ensures it doesn't get stuck the next time. Screw in the new sensor hand tight and then secure it with the wrench. Finally, hook up the electrical connector securely. Finally, reset your car's computer with an OBD scanner to turn off the check engine light and verify everything's running smoothly. All right, moving on to the unsung heroes of your engine. Fix number three, Spark plugs and wires. Think of spark plugs as your engine's pulse. Without a strong spark, your engine's just not firing on all cylinders. Spark plugs ignite the air fuel mixture in your cylinders, giving your engine the jump start it needs. Over time, they get worn, dirty, or even corroded, which causes many issues. Wires transfer that crucial spark from your ignition system to the plugs. So if they're cracked or damaged, your engine suffers. You'll know if you need to replace the spark plugs if your OBD scanner reads code P0300. Now to fix it, you'll need spark plug socket, ratchet wrench and extension, replacement spark plugs, anti-seize lubricant, optional but recommended, and finally, dielectric grease for wire boots. This process is not the hardest. First, pop your hood, 
and find the spark plugs, usually tucked in along the engine block, covered with wires or ignition coils. Consult your manual if you're unsure. Next, remove the wires or coils, gently twist and pull the spark plug wires off, or disconnect the ignition coils if your vehicle has coil on plug designs. Remember the order if you're removing multiple wires. Now, remove the old spark plugs, attach the spark plug socket to your ratchet, and carefully unscrew each plug. Be gentle. Torquing too hard can damage the cylinder head. Before installing new plugs, check the gap, little metal tip at the tip of the plug, using a feeler gauge. Adjust as per your vehicle's specs. Proper gap ensures a strong, consistent spark. Apply a little anti-seize on the threads, if recommended, to prevent future seizure. Carefully screw in each plug by hand first to avoid cross-threading. Then, tighten with your socket. Be cautious, over-tightening can crack the porcelain insulator. Attach the spark plug wires or coils to the new plugs, making sure each is seated firmly. Use dielectric grease in the boots to keep moisture out and prevent arcing. Finally, start your car and listen for smooth running. If you used a scanner earlier, clear any stored codes and see if the check engine light stays off. Next up, if you learned something so far, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Fix number four, mass airflow sensor. This little device measures the amount of air entering your engine so your ECU can calculate the right amount of fuel to inject. If it's dirty or malfunctioning, your engine gets the wrong info, causing misfires, stalling, or a check engine light that just won't quit. The OBD reader will read out codes P0100 to P0104. In order to fix this, you'll need an MAF sensor cleaner, specifically designed for this purpose, screwdriver or pliers to remove the sensor, and gloves, keeping things clean. This process is pretty simple. First, locate the sensor. It's usually situated in the air intake duct between your air filter box and the throttle body. Now carefully disconnect the electrical connector, don't yank it. Then unscrew or unclip the sensor from its housing. Inspect the sensor, check for visible dust, dirt, or oil. If it looks dirty but the sensor itself is still in good condition, cleaning might do the trick. Spray the MAF cleaner generously onto the sensor's wire or film, depending on your model. Do not use regular carb or brake cleaner, only specialized MAF cleaner. Gently let it dry for a few minutes, no wiping or touching the sensitive part. If cleaning works, reattach the sensor carefully, reconnect the wiring firmly, and you're good to go. If the sensor looks damaged or if cleaning doesn't solve the issue, it's time for a new one. A clean MAF sensor can vastly improve throttle response, fuel efficiency, and overall drivability. Think of it as giving your engine a breath of fresh air, simple yet powerful. Keep it clean and your engine will thank you. Fix number five, catalytic converter check. The environmental superhero of your vehicle's exhaust system. The catalytic converter transforms toxic gases like carbon monoxide and nitrogen oxides into carbon dioxide and water vapor. It's critical for keeping your car eco-friendly and compliant with emission standards, you'll know if your catalytic converter is failing by a rotten egg smell. A sulfur-like odor could indicate hydrogen sulfide failing to convert properly, or if your OBD scanner is reading P0420 or P0430. To resolve this one, we'll need a car jack, and jack stands for access and a wrench or ratchet set for removal if needed. First, ensure your vehicle is on a flat surface parking brake engaged, and wheels chalked. Use a car jack properly supported by jack stands to safely access the undercarriage. Locate the converter, typically located between the exhaust manifold and the muffler. It's usually a bulky, oval-shaped component in the exhaust line. Look for any visible signs of damage like rust, soot, or cracks on the converter's surface. Ensure all connections and the heat shield are intact and secure. With the engine running and warm, not hot, feel for exhaust flowing freely out of the tailpipe. A notable drop in flow can signal a clogged converter. 
Listen for rattles, give the converter a gentle tap when the car is cool. Listen for any loose material inside which might indicate a breakage. If your catalytic converter turns out to be damaged or heavily clogged, replacing it is the best course of action. Ensure your replacement is high quality or OEM. Substandard parts can lead to further issues. Regular maintenance and keeping up with your vehicle's emission system, including spark plugs and fuel injectors, can prolong the life of your catalytic converter. Now fix number six, EVAP system. We're talking about the evaporative emission control system. The EVAP system prevents fuel vapors from escaping your fuel tank and being released into the environment. It captures these vapors using a series of valves and sends them back into the engine to be burned. This helps improve air quality and fuel efficiency while keeping your car environmentally compliant. You'll know it's the EVAP system if the OBD scanner reads codes P0442, P0456, or P0455. Or you can also tell if you start noticing a gas odor. That could indicate a leak. Tools and supplies needed to check for leaks. Vacuum pump with gauge, optional for leak testing. Basic hand tools for checking hoses and connections and a spray bottle with soapy water for leak detection. First, use an OBD scanner to read any stored fault codes. Codes like P0445, large leak, or P0442, small leak, can indicate where to start your investigation. Check all visible EVAP components under the hood, including the gas cap, charcoal canister, purge valve, vent valve, and associated hoses Look for signs of damage, cracks, or loose connections. Inspect hoses and lines, follow the EVAP system's vacuum lines, and hoses for leaks or disconnections. Use a spray bottle with soapy water along suspect areas and watch for any bubbles forming, which can signal a leak. If the leak you found is minor cracks, some temporary fixes involve using dedicated sealants or tapes for small hoses until a replacement is available. If too complex or difficult to find leaks, might require a mechanic with specialized equipment. Fix number seven, throttle body. All right, let's give some love to your throttle body. The throttle body controls the amount of air flowing into the engine, adjusting according to the accelerator pedal position. It's a key player in ensuring your engine gets the right air fuel mix for efficient combustion, optimal performance, and responsive acceleration. Symptoms you may have, rough idle, stalling, poor acceleration, and slow or inconsistent response when pressing the accelerator. Also, your OBD reader will read code P012. To fix it, you'll need a throttle body cleaner, specifically designed for this purpose, screwdrivers or socket set to remove components, and clean, lint-free cloths. Now how to do it. Find your throttle body, disconnect the battery for safety, then remove any hoses, ducts, or components blocking access to the throttle body. Remember the placement for reassembly. Inspect the throttle body. Before cleaning, look for significant deposits or discolorations that might indicate heavier buildup. Spray the throttle body cleaner onto the metal flap, throttle plate, and surrounding components. Use a soft cloth to wipe away grime and carbon deposits gently. Avoid using anything abrasive that might scratch or damage the surface. Next, manually open the throttle plate, typically controlled electronically or via cables, to clean the edges and back of it. Ensure to spray cleaner down the bore to clear out all deposits. Once clean, reattach all the previously removed components, connect the battery and double check that all connections and hoses are secure. With electronically controlled throttles, don't keep it disconnected from the battery for extended periods without proper procedures as it might require a reset of the ECU settings. Fix number eight, battery check and change. Batteries can wear out, leak, or just give up the ghost at the worst times. Without a healthy battery, your car won't start, your lights dim, and your radio might cut out mid Spotify playlist. Plus, a failing battery can cause your check engine light to pop up for reasons you never expected. To replace a failing battery, you'll need a wrench or socket for terminal clamps, wire brush or terminal cleaner, replacement battery, 
and battery terminal protector or petroleum jelly. Optional but recommended. Now before you begin, ensure the vehicle is off, key removed, and parked on a flat surface. Wear gloves and eye protection because batteries contain acid and can spark. Look for corrosion, leaks, or swollen casing on old batteries. Use a multimeter. A healthy, fully charged battery should read around 12.6 volts or more. Many auto parts stores do free battery testing. They simulate starting conditions to check the battery's capacity. If you see corrosion, loosen the terminal clamps with a wrench. Use a wire brush or terminal cleaner to scrub away the white or greenish buildup. Applying a layer of petroleum jelly on the terminals after cleaning helps prevent future corrosion. Now if you need to replace it, disconnect the negative terminal first, black cable, then the positive, red. Carefully lift it out, it's heavy. Install the new battery. Place it carefully in the tray, connect the positive terminal first, then the negative. Tighten clamps securely, but don't over-tighten. Batteries are sturdy but fragile. Start your car to ensure it fires up instantly. Double-check terminal connections and clean up any spilled acid or debris. All right, there you have it. Eight easy fixes to check engine lights that you can do yourself. Also, don't forget to check out that OBD scanner in the description. Remember, many of these issues are simple to diagnose and even simpler to fix, saving you time and money. But if you try these tips and your check engine light still won't turn off, or if the problem seems complex, don't hesitate to reach out to a pro. Thanks for watching. And if you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more practical car tips, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. Until next time, stay safe on the road and keep those engines running smoothly.